The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 733. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yapchan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She's an actress, a producer, and an entrepreneur, and I'm really excited to have her on and share her story with us today on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Georgina Tolentino. Georgina, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to the listeners. Hi, I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast, Sheena. I think what you're doing is really amazing. And I've listened to your episodes and it's a great way for me to start my morning. So I'm really honored to be here. I'm Georgina and I'm an actress. I'm a producer and I also own a candle line. Thanks for sharing that. And Georgina, what's your cultural background? So I was born and raised in San Francisco. I'm Filipino and both my parents are from the Philippines, but they're also mixed with some European. So my mom is part Portuguese and my dad is part Italian and Spanish. And so for me growing up Filipino, there's a lot of Catholicism as an influence and Spanish cultural influence. And so it was really great to have this kind of mixed background but I also felt there was a lot of identity uh, issues I think with that because you even at being you know Asian American there's being Asian and then being Asian American and for me it was uh trying to figure out my place and who I who I am and who I was and trying to be Filipino but not being Filipino enough whatever that meant and so I felt like confidence was the key to me owning all of my cultures Thanks for sharing that. And Georgina, what's your favorite self-confidence quote? My favorite self-confidence quote is, I always get to where I'm going because I walk away from where I have been. And that's a Christopher Robin quote. (laughs) To me, I love that because sometimes I feel it's really important to be present and being present aligns with what we create our future to be. And our past defines us of who we are. But sometimes I think that can also has held me back in my growth sometimes. And that also means for me looking at validation, external validation from other people. And I've had to learn that to really understand who I am, I've had to walk away from people and understand and do work within myself, wondering, you know, why I have these triggers, why I have these triggers that can cause blockages from abundance and opportunities and how to work around it. So for me, you know, that quote is really to face things head on, explore who you are and learn to walk away from things that don't serve your growth. So I think that's really important. I think for a lot of us, self-confidence is also setting boundaries of people. Thanks for sharing that great quote. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? Self-confidence to me is owning your authentic self and knowing your authentic self. I think that a lot of people may not necessarily know who they are, and that's okay. I think I'm still figuring it out. But I think setting aside time to really wonder why we're the way we are, why we tick, and own our story is is key to self-confidence. Because I think knowing who you are and knowing you are authentically outside of Again, external validation, whether it be social media, the perception of yourself, like I feel like authenticity is who you who your character is and operating from a place of integrity in your day to day life and work is really important to me. Self-confidence to me is not apologizing for who you are and what you want, but to even get to that point, I think constantly exploring your authentic self by yourself is really important and not apologizing for the things you want out of life. To me, that's there's nothing sexier to me than people who are, and women especially, are passionate about what they want out of life and the things that they do to, to overcome them. Thanks for sharing that great definition. And Georgina, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? I would say my life before self-confidence was kind of (laughs) messy. I think I felt frazzled all the time and I didn't know, I just didn't know who I, who I was. And I think when you don't know who you are, you don't know what you want. And I also felt like I was apologizing for taking up space, which is a very big cultural thing with me. I think 
Asian women specifically, we are and women in general, we're kind of taught to be as a society to be a bit more not not loud. You know, my mom was always like, just calm down, don't take up too much room, like don't try too hard, take up space, but don't be, you know, that girl. And that girl meant being someone who is such a more of a spectacle and, and using your voice and just kind of blending in, you know? And I've realized that all the things I want out of life, being an actor, being a, a filmmaker, being uh, owning a line, a wellness line, you can't be that way. You cannot be someone who is well behaved. There's a mixture. There's a difference between being well behaved and being a spectacle, I guess. And so for me, it's important that I honor my family through not apologizing for the things I want, because I think sometimes we have family members who uh, culturally have never seen anything done like this before, you know, especially pursuing performing. It's very unusual. Now it's getting better. But growing up, people didn't look like me. You know, my my dad and I watched movies growing up and we, we loved it, but we never were able to identify ourselves on screen. And so for me, it was really important. It's really important to understand culturally why it can get in the way of working on self-confidence specifically being asian being filipino being a woman and i learned that it's a mixture of so many years of colonization from filipino history of trying to constantly adapt with who's uh, i guess taking over the country and that is trickled down to our cultural identity of trying to figure out because we have spanish heritage we have Asian heritage versus not quite East Asian, you know? And so for us, there's a lot of trying to constantly blend in. And I think now there's a lot more ownership in being Filipino and owning who you are being Filipino American, but there's also different versions of that. And then being different versions of being Asian American. And for me, getting a sense of my culture and heritage and, and knowing that I'm enough is, has helped me with my self-confidence. Thanks for sharing that. I think a lot of women deal with that, especially, you know, parents telling us not to make any noise, just kind of sit in the back and never like step out of that line or step out of that path so that we don't look stupid. And, you know, I know they have good intentions. They just want the best for you. But sometimes you just got to go out there and do the things that you want, make some noise, you know, or else society is always going to think Asian women are quiet and submissive and we're not. And what was that point in your life when you realized you can go out there and be who you are today? What was that aha moment? I think the aha moment was when I was about 25. I was auditioning for pretty uh, roles that were, I felt, degrading to Asian women. I remember getting an audition and the character was someone who said, You're, okay, the main character was having an affair with me and my character was supposed to be a maid who was saving up for more plastic surgery. And when we got caught, the mother said, your people built the railroads, move it, San Rio. And I remember... I'll never forget the audition. And I didn't get it, thank God. But here's the thing. It's like people were like, this is the biggest thing you're going to get. This is going to be it. And what hurt me was that the auditions I was getting were so over-sexualized, exotified. I wasn't, I was like the exotic creature that was prowling around town, you know? And it was consistent. It wasn't like that was one thing and then I was a doctor next. It was like I was always being perceived as an Asian woman to be this exotic conquest. And I understood that and I wasn't okay with that. And, you know, when you go out for something, you train and you train and you train, you, you have this caliber of training that you want to share with the world. And then it's kind of demeaning to be presented as a certain way consistently because of how you look. That to me really woke me up because I went, okay, I love acting, but going on these auditions, the industry is making me hate it because I'm playing a clown, you know, a, a character of a kind of farce on what being Asian American is to be the joke. And that really hurt me. But I went, you know what, I'm also the kind of girl that grew up with not that much, went to an inner city school, you know, our teachers had to stay late after school to teach us. I ended up getting into Berkeley, I didn't go, went to Santa Barbara instead. But I, I grew up in a, in a mentality that if I wasn't okay with something, I had to do something about it. And so for me, that aha moment of going, if I don't, become this confident woman that takes up space, doesn't apologize for what she wants, and knows what I'm capable of, then how do I expect other people to perceive me other than that submissive person and culturally what we've been? So I had to become confident. I have to become own who I am. I had to be authentic because I had to see, to show people that our stories, again, deserve to be told just like everyone else's, not in this demeaning way. So when I was about 25, I decided, you know what? I'm going to start producing some projects as well that I can be in 
that I love, that I feel like needs to be made and, and represents Asian women of all, you know, ranges and that we're not perfect, but we also have icons that people don't know about. And that's when I just start, started uh, my production company. And we have three things in development right now, but it's definitely something that I've always believed in. And to me, when I started doing that, I felt more fulfilled as an artist. And to me, I realized if I have to, if I want to do all these things, I need to step up my game. I need to be all these things. I need to be confident. That meant a lot of work personally for myself to re- program and recondition some of the thing limiting beliefs that I had been raised with, you know, and being around other women, other women of color, other Asian women to talk about this because we had to get rid of old belief systems for it to change. And I always believe, you know, to do something that's never been done, you have to do something that has never been done. And I also ask myself, you know, what, what kind of work do I need within myself to do that? And a lot of the, the answers was, you know, self-exploration through therapy, looking at other inspirational women who have come before me and setting really strong boundaries with, with people in my family who mean well, but may instill a scarcity mentality sometimes, you know, which is understandable coming from immigrant families, but sometimes that may not serve us when we're trying to elevate our, our life and our culture. So the aha moment was that audition that made me realize if I don't become confident, if I don't stand up for myself and my fellow Asian American women saying that this depiction of us isn't right, isn't accurate, isn't okay, then I wouldn't be here trying to make a movement for cultural change in our perception in the media. So it's a bigger thing than me when you think of it that way. It's a bigger thing than me. I carry all of us in a room. Then to me, that had to come back to how what I need to change in my self-confidence. Thanks for sharing that. And it's it's crazy, you know, how so many people feel like Asian or see Asian women as just someone who's just quiet, submissive and are just told what to do. And, you know, it still happens where Asian people are being placed in roles that just pretty much make makes fun of Asian people, right? Whether it's the nerdy Asian or the Asian with the accent, not realizing like there's more substance to us. You know, we actually offer a lot more than you realize. And if you give us that chance, we can show it. Um, and it's slowly, you know, it's slowly showing up right in Hollywood. But even then, there, there's still a lot of work to be done. And, you know, it's great that you decided to just create that bigger movement to tell more empowering stories of Asian women, because we are more than just quiet and submissive and obedient. We're strong, we're courageous, we're persistent. You know, we... Mm -hmm we have the power to give life and people don't realize how powerful a woman is until, you know, they get reminded or they, sh or we show them that, you know, being a woman is amazing. And, you know, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey to self-confidence. What would be that one tip you'd give to her? I would say don't take constructive criticism from people who aren't going where you want to go. Again, I think that has to do a lot with external validation. And I think for me, I'm not alone in this. I talked to my friends who are also Asian American who have the same issue is, uh, is family. We love our family. I think sometimes we expect that they're going to get it. Sometimes do. Sometimes parents are fully supportive, but sometimes when it's never been done, it's almost like you're trying to create a magic trick. So I think to other women, you know, out there having that security within yourself and knowing that you are enough and not to be so hard on yourself on where you're at right now and have how far you've come, it's really important to not always ask for permission to do what you want to do. Thanks for sharing those tips. And if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do or check out some of your work, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yes, you can find me on Instagram. My name is Georgina Tolentino, and you can follow all of the things I'm working on and connect with me there. Thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Georgina, you can also head on over to the TaoSelfConfidence.com and search for Georgina's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I really just want to thank Georgina today for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Georgina. Thank you so much, Sheena. Thank you for all the good work, work you're doing and for bringing a community of amazing Asian women, Asian American women together to relate to. And I think that's that's really admirable. And I just think, commend you and thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. Oh, thanks. And, you know, thank you again for being on the show and sharing your story. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of The Tao of Self-Confidence. 
Get your free audiobook by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.